If you own an Anet AA and you do not do this one simple free upgrade, your 3D printer could kill you. In the news recently, we have heard about another Anet A8 bursting into flames and taking a part of somebody's house with them. And so far, thank goodness, there have been no reports of any fatalities happening. But if you have an Anet A8, I cannot stress to you highly enough that you must upgrade the firmware to the latest version of Marlin as soon as you possibly can. Do not make another print until you upgrade to the latest version of Marlin. Before I talk about why this is happening, I'm gonna jump straight into the important, to the meat of how you can fix this. Number one, you should be taking reasonable safety precautions, which I outlined in my 3D Printing 101 Safety First video, and if you haven't watched it, you can watch it here. But the short version is, one, get some fire suppression and keep it near your 3D printer. Now, this is the cheapest fire extinguisher I could get at my local department store, and it works for grease, electrical fires, fabric fires, trash, hopefully works for acrylic, and I hope to never test it. It is always right here next to my 3D printers. It's usually near the door where you can't see it because it's off frame, but it is always here, and I cannot stress highly enough for you to have that. You should also have a fire detection system near your 3D printers. And lastly, don't leave your 3D printers to run unattended. You should be able to check on your 3D printers frequently and make sure that they are running well. And again, that's all outlined in my 3D Printing 101 video. Now, specifically for the ANET A8 and many other 3D printers as well, you can keep your firmware up to date and make sure that you have the safety features in that firmware turned on. In the ANET A8, it shipped with a version of Marlin that they had modified themselves, and one of the strange modifications was they turned off a runaway heat detection system. Now maybe, I don't know, I, I, I feel to defend them and say maybe they saw a, a false positives in testing and turning it off was the quickest way, but the fact that they shipped it out with that off without turning it back on before sending it out is incredibly irresponsible and you can turn it back on and make sure you're running the latest version of the firmware with additional and better safety procedures simply by getting the usb cable that came with your 3d printer plugging it in loading the software on your computer running it and running that update to your firmware and if you need help doing it i have a video that i will link to in the cards here and in the description that will walk you through the process i followed this video earlier today both to make sure that this video was a good one and would help you and to make sure that i was on the latest version and i had updated before to turn this feature back on and because I like to stay on the latest version, but I updated again today to the latest, latest version beyond what I had updated it to. And I can tell you that this video will help. It's got a little bit in the middle about some things that he did. You can skip that, but you can jump to the end to see how to personally name your printer, which is kind of a fun thing to do while you're in here mucking around with the electronics. But it will also make you safer. Now, why is this happening right now? Why are ANA A8 bursting into flame all of a sudden? The answer is their, their components are falling apart. Well, not say falling apart, but they are failing and breaking the closed system that they have in place that, that's supposed to keep you safe. Here's the way it works. All 3D printers, despite the fact that they have many different configurations for extruders, have similar parts into them. Most of them have a heat block. That is to say, a block of metal, usually aluminum, that has a hole drilled through it for your filament to go through, a heater element with a space for it to rest in there to heat up the whole heat block, including your filament and get it nice and melty for coming out, and a temperature sensor that sits right on or sometimes in that heat block to monitor the, the temperature as it goes. This creates a closed system, and the way that it works is this. The electronics tell the heater element, hey, heater element, time to heat up. And it keeps asking the temperature sensor, hey, how hot is it? 
and the temperature sensor tells the electronics. And when the electronics see that the temperature sensor is reporting the temperature that they want it to get to, or close enough to the range of temperatures that they want it to get to, they tell the heater element, stop heating up, and it turns off. And the whole system cools down just a little bit, and the temperature sensor reads that cool down, and the, te the system tells the heater element to heat back up, and it brings the temperature back up, and keeps kind of going up and down, up and down, rocking the temperature across this this threshold of temperature, keeping it within a range hot enough to melt your filament and make your print happen. And when this whole system works, it works fine. But what happens when this closed system, this circuit of information, gets broken? Say, for instance, that the heater element, because the screw that is holding it in place is, is not holding it tight enough, the heater element slips out of your hot block. Or Perhaps your temperature sensor slips out of its place on the hot block and it's hanging off to the side, or maybe the temperature sensor short circuits or something happens to it where it cannot function properly. Then the system goes like this. Controller software says heater element, heat up. It does. The temperature sensor says, eh, looks pretty cold to me, and the controller software tells the heater element, keep going, keep going, and the temperature sensor keeps going, eh, cold, because it's getting the wrong data. We call this a runaway heat problem. And what can happen? How hot can these hot blocks get? How hot can these, these heater elements get? Believe it or not, they can get hot enough to melt through aluminum. They can get hot enough to set acrylic on fire, the acrylic that the frame of your printer is made out of. Still, once you get acrylic burning, you are burning hot and you can bet that everything else in the environment around it is going to catch on fire as well. Now, the reason why I'm telling you that you need to upgrade your firmware is because Marlin has in it a runaway sensor. That is to say, what the software does is it looks at what it's expecting to read back from the temperature sensor. When it tells the heater to heat up, it expects the temperature sensor to report that the temperature is rising. And if the temperature doesn't rise as expected or drops suddenly during a print, the temperature, the, the printer will immediately shut everything down and display an error message. It will not let things continue. Now, that might mean that you're going to lose a print. That might mean that if something goes wrong, a breeze comes along, or you blow really, really cold air on your nozzle, that you might get a false positive. And if you're working in an extreme environment, say a cold shed in the winter, you might get those false positives and you might find it difficult to print. But better that than a fire in your 3D printer that burns down a portion of your house, or worse, hurts you or members of your family. And while this takes care of any of the ANET A8s that are out, we still have a problem of new ANET A8s going into the system, going, going out there into the world. And what are we going to do about those? <sighs> Change of venue and uh, wardrobe for the last part of this discussion. But what is to be done about ANET and them releasing 3D printers that are just not safe, there's already talk about putting financial pressure on them, another boycott directed at ANET until they make these machines safer and possibly even until they make it easier for people to upgrade their machines and make them safer. And while I personally think that that would be a great idea, the matter gets really complicated because the last boycott that we did as a community to get Creality to open up their open source was successful. It was successful because of the boycott, despite the fact that I didn't throw my full weight behind it, but it was also, I believe, successful largely in part due to the work by Naomi Wu, uh, a maker in China who goes by the handle of Real Sexy Cyborg, who negotiated for us and translated the idea of what we were trying to do to the people in China to enable them to make the right choice. And there is actually a lot of complications in this entire matter that I don't want to go into on this video, but I do want you to hit my blog post, check it out, and learn what you can about helping Naomi because she's in a tight spot now that I don't feel that she deserves to be. 
I'm getting off topic here, but the point is that boycott got us the source code to the changes that Creality had made to the Marlin software. And in digging through those changes, we discovered that Creality had also turned off the runaway thermal detection safety. What do we do? Should we boycott ANET and re-boycott Creality even though they just got back onto the nice list? It's complicated and quite frankly, I'm not quite sure where to go here. And so I'm going to follow the community on this one. The one thing that I am going to do, I have a video out there where I recommend a lot of 3D printers, including Creality and ANET AA. And I'm gonna take that video down, at, at least for now, because I would not feel good to discover that somebody who had damage to their house or worse was because of my recommendation of buying one of these printers. These printers are a ticking time bomb unless you get this fixed. And, and while putting it in the hands of the consumer to fix is not the wrong answer, I feel like there's a better one and I don't know how we're going to get there. So for now, let's just leave it at that and say, if you have an ANET, upgrade it. And if you don't, I'm not gonna recommend you buy one. As far as anything more than that, let me know in the comments what you think should be done. As always, I appreciate you sticking with me to this part of the video, and I really appreciate my Patreon supporters. You guys are the wind beneath my wings and getting me to where I am. I so much appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. And as always, as this entire video has been about, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.